coach Prime in Colorado making their triumphant return to the Big 12. The Buffs went 4-8 and eight last season, were picked to finish 11th in a 16-team conference this season. Here was Deion Sanders on his outlook for this year's team. Do you feel an obligation with whom you are to perform at a higher level or yeah. coach at a higher level? Yeah, like I, yes. Yes, I'm, I'm judged on a different scale. I, I, my, my, my wins are totally different than your wins. Your wins, you just judge in football. That's why I have to start out and give you education and academics and so forth. I have to give you those things so you understand there's a greater scope. I can't win nine games and we, our GPA suffers. Our GPA can't be high, but we lose another eight games. We, we can't not go and grab high school players and you got a bunch of guys in the portal, uh, out of the portal that's getting incarcerated. My wins are different. We have to win in every area. That's the way we're judged. And I'm cool with that because we, we, we come a little different. You know, he just does things differently. Coach Prime at the podium. What's your reaction to that about holding Coach Prime? And he said it right there, holding him to a higher standard. Yeah, I don't disagree with him because I, when, we, when you look at Deion Sanders, and I start with the broad personality, right? He's going to be real. He's going to be his authentic self. He's going to tell it like it is, no matter if you like that or not. But then you also look at the success he's been able to have throughout life, right? He's been successful at everything. And we know about, you know, him being a Hall of Famer, the best cornerback to ever play the game. I don't care what Mike Tannenbaum says <laughs> and who he thinks is supposed to be number one. That is Deion Sanders. You look at the first six weeks of the college football season last year, Matt Berry, and I know you are heavily involved in that, and it wasn't Nick Saban in Alabama. It wasn't Ohio State and Ryan Day. It was Deion Sanders. Right, yeah. It was Colorado. So you, think, you talk about the notoriety that he brings to Colorado, uh, but I also like Deion making sure these young fellas become men and do things the right way. Don't just become football players. Be a man that plays the game of football. So, yes, we're going to judge him differently because of the expectations that we've always had for Dion and what he's been able to accomplish and have success uh, in the game called life. So I think that's another reason why we do that. Yeah, and you mentioned, look, the first part of last season, college game day was there. Fox had their pregame show there. Good morning, America. Everybody was there to watch the Dion show because yep. of how Colorado started. But if we're fair, Heather, they ended the season 4-8, and eight, improvement from the year before Dion got there. But why do we watch Colorado differently than every other team in America? Because the lens that we view that program through was created by Deion Sanders. It's Hollywood. There's a reason he has 5 million followers on his Instagram account. A lot of that is the success that he's had throughout his life, but everyone wants to know what's he going to say next? What's he going to do next? That's why everybody's paying attention to them. But I would push back just a little bit on the different standards because I can tell you, there's no greater pressure than at Texas, where I sat with Steve Sarkeesian in his office, and he told me as his win total increased, so did his team's GPA. So every college coach in the country right now is facing a similar standard in that they need to win, they need to get to the college football playoff, and they do need to have those GPAs and everything else and all the intangibles. But I do agree, for all the reasons we just said, that Colorado is viewed differently. Yeah, they're viewed differently because I think of any coach in America, Coach Prime goes up there, sunglasses on, better or worse, makes a lot about him when he's at the podium, whereas most coaches, to be fair, try to deflect the attention from themselves. Well, that's Dion, right? That's Dion when he was at Florida State, when he was drafted to the Atlanta Falcons, when he played with the Dallas Cowboys, the San Francisco 49ers. But also, Dion being Dion has allowed a lot of eyes to be on these young men so they could pot potentially go to the National Football League. So I, I don't view it as a bad thing, Matt, because the attention is going to be on Colorado. And at the end of the day, you want these young players to have an opportunity to be able to get to the next level. Okay, look, we know the offensive line was an issue last year for Colorado. They got to make it good this year to even have an opportunity yeah. to compete in the Big 12. Heather, we know with Colorado, Shador Sanders, he's the star. It stops and starts with him. How great must Shador be in order to make up for some of those questions that might still linger from an offensive line that was just dreadful a year ago? 
He doesn't have anything to prove. He is great. He's accurate. He's tough. Any NFL scout that has watched him knows this. But look at those numbers. Blown block percentage, 55%. Do you guys want to stand back there? Because I sure don't. He's got to stay on his feet, and he's got to stay healthy. But it is more than the offensive line. This is a Colorado team that last year scored 30, 40 points. And the defense was ranked 124th in the country in scoring defense. And yet, we're still talking about him. Why? Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, and the attention he brought Colorado. Yep. Uh, but again, 4-8 is not going to get it done in two years. What's their expectations? We'll get to that uh, so much more. Keep